It has never been safe to be an activist or political dissident. You could be subject to harassment, intimidation, imprisonment, physical assault, or even murder. In the past, escaping your country of origin was an important step towards finding safety. But with the expansion of tools available to authoritarian governments, activists can now be affected by what's known as digital transnational repression. These tools allow governments to reach beyond borders and gain access to activists' social media and email accounts through surveillance and hacking attempts. In speaking with dissidents who have relocated to Canada, it's clear that digital transnational repression is having a serious impact on the advocacy work, sense of security, and emotional welfare of these communities. But there is little support for victims who experience such targeting and policy efforts to date have been insufficient. For diaspora communities, digital tools are often the only means of staying in contact with loved ones back home. Activists have been forced to move all around the world. We don't have the luxury of direct and physical communication. At a certain point, you need to differentiate between your political life and your personal relationships. Unfortunately, I know it's wrong, but I used the same platforms for both my personal and political life. Technology is critical for transnational advocacy work, and it keeps exiled activists connected to fellow activists in their home country. But using these technologies leaves many vulnerable to digital attacks, and this leads to increased feelings of panic and uncertainty, with some questioning every aspect of their lives. It has created in me permanent paranoia and constant anxiety about violating my privacy and using it against me. This affected my emotional relationships as well and created a state of psychological instability. I don't usually feel as free as I used to be to connect with any public Wi-Fi. I don't sit in coffee shops anymore because I have to be connected to the internet and the only internet that I would trust, my internet, here at home. Women are particularly vulnerable to digital transnational repression. While online attacks like rape threats, forged intimate photos, and death threats are dangerous on their own, these can often culminate in physical aggressions. I had one individual actually write me a whole poem that was over a page long on my Instagram that talked about how he was going to rape me. I was walking my dog, and as I crossed the street, a man started chasing me all the way to my apartment building. I locked the door behind me, but he started banging on it and screaming. I called the police and they said there is nothing they could do about it. While the threats of digital transnational repression are very real and only likely to increase, activists have few places to turn to for help. There's no 1-800 number to complain about digital repression, as far as I know. Governments, including Canada, must commit to holding the perpetrators of digital transnational repression accountable, supporting the victims of these attacks, and engaging with the platforms and private companies that facilitate digital transnational repression. Taking action is integral at a time when our democratic spaces continue to narrow. When activists are silenced, the world becomes safer for dictators, but more dangerous for all of us who want to speak out against injustice.